I'm Ryan. I'm a science teacher. I'm Cheryl, and I slept through science. Each episode will tackle a science question you may have learned in school, but can't quite remember or fully explain. And I'll take the risk of asking the dumb questions so that we can all understand the science we slept through. The bell has rung. Let's get started. Welcome to lesson nine. Awesome. Ryan. Yes. As we've been doing this podcast, I've been thinking more and more about the daily science that is in my life. Oh, the daily and science. What science am I capable of doing? Okay. Probably lots like, of science. Like there's just so much that my body does that is science, like everything. True. Um, mm -hmm. But I was just thinking of like, what are some of the explanations that I don't understand? Like I get digestion. I don't know. You know, I'm trying to think sure. my heart pumps, my blood, blah, right. blah, blah, all of those things. But here's what I don't get. Okay. Is, um, how does whistling work? Whistling like, <laughs> like yes. that kind of whistling. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know I can do it, but okay. I don't know. Like, well, why can I do it? How does that work? Like, what is my body even doing when I whistle? Oh, okay. So that's right. my question for the day. Okay. How does whistling work? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's a great question. Let's dive in and find out what you already know with our pre-assessment. So okay. what do you know about whistling? <laughs> um, I know that when I was in kindergarten, I could whistle by breathing in. And one of my friends told me that that's not real whistling. Real whistling oh. is when you blow out, not when you breathe in. And then for a long time, I tried to figure out how to whistle while blowing out. And now I can do both. And I feel like now I can actually whistle. So that's one <laughs> thing I know. Okay. Um, but when it comes to <laughs> not just my personal history with whistling, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I know that air can make noise, Okay. like the wind makes noise, but not on its own. Like, I think if the, the wind were just in a blank void and it were moving, I don't think it would just make noise. A like blank I think it, void? I think it needs to interact with other objects for the wind mm. to make noise. Like I think about a storm, I think it's maybe the wind like hitting the trees or that's making different noises. And I feel like whistling is similar to wind because the, and the wind whistles. Um, or like if it's going, I don't know, through something where there's like a sharp contrast in like, oh, it's going through like a narrow thing and it's all of a sudden mm -hmm. like hitting something or just if there's things happening around the wind, I feel like, or the wind interacting with other objects is maybe what's making the noise okay. as opposed to just like a flat plane. Maybe, maybe wind can just make noise if you're just like no trees, no anything. Could you still hear the wind? I don't know. But I feel like mm -hmm. you hear it more when it's interacting with other things. Okay. So I feel like that's probably like whistling where like, because I'm narrowing my lips and making a certain shape, all of a sudden the air going through it makes a noise. Well, if I just like, <sighs> that makes a noise, but it doesn't make a whistle. Mm. Maybe wind does make noise, but it has to make a whistle like through in more of a narrow opening or something like that. Mm. And I can whistle with a piece of grass where you put, have you ever seen this? You mm -hmm. take like the thick blade of grass and you put it between your thumbs and then you blow. And that sounds like some crazy kazoo yep. or something like that. Yep. And then there's people that can do the, the like pinch their lip crazy loud and then I'm very jealous of them because I'm mm -hmm. like what if I need to get my kid's attention and he's across the field I can't do that whistle I can just yell um <laughs> and it's probably similar to musical instruments too because that <laughs> noise is happening because of air and there are all sorts of different noises because of so many different elements that are happening just, but, but it's all just because like air is blowing through something and there's other things going on. Yeah. 
<laughs> so those are my things. thoughts. <laughs> those are my thoughts on whistling. <laughs> those are great thoughts. All right. So I think, Cheryl, we're going to start by actually doing some real basics on sound itself. Okay. Because you talked about wind, and if wind is moving, you can hear it, but maybe you can't hear it. You seem to kind of go back and forth on that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since whistling is a sound, I think it's important for us to just start. And again, we'll just do this real quickly. If you have more questions about sound, we can make that another episode if you'd okay. like. <laughs> so make sure you write down those additional questions if you have them. But basically, sound is waves in air. When air gets compressed, the molecules get closer to each other and farther away from each other. And that's a, a sound wave. And so anytime you have air getting compressed or expanded, that is what our ears and our brains interpret as sound. Oh, so it's like, okay, I don't want to go down too much of a tangent, but is sure. that how like an air horn works then? What do you mean? I don't know, an air horn, it, like there's air in the horn and then it just like shoves it through and makes that loud noise. Yes, it, th that is a very simplified explanation, but yes, okay. that is, that's how anything that makes sound work. Wow. If you've ever seen a speaker and actually looked at an actual speaker, not with, you know, oftentimes speakers will have like a metal covering, but if yeah. you see the actual speaker cone and they usually are kind of a cone shape, when it's making sound, it's vibrating really, really quickly. It's moving like back and forth. By doing that, it's pushing air. Mm. It's making, you know, areas where the air is more pushed together and less pushed together. It's just doing it really, really fast. And obviously we can't see the air, but we can sense it and we can hear it. Mm. So that's also why like, I mean, there's probably like a million examples, but like if I like, if I have, take a lid off of something and it's like really hard to get it off. It makes a loud pop is because there's stuff going on with air. Yes, that's exactly that. right. Usually okay. what that's doing is the reason it's hard is because there's a vacuum set up or something where mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of air. And so when you pull that off, air is rushing in very, very quickly. And that's the sound you hear. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a whistle is going to operate in the same way. If you're going to try and make a sound that you can hear, you need to get the air molecules to vibrate in a specific way. You need them to be compressed or separated from each other to make a sound wave. Ooh, okay. Okay, so does, does yeah. that part make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's the first part. And the second part then is how do we do that? And you actually talked about a lot of examples of things. You talked about the whistle with the blade of grass that you put like between your thumbs and you blow through, or you also made the connection to musical instruments. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole section of musical instruments. Uh, there's the section called woodwinds and brass instruments. And those are all based on blowing air through something. Right. And controlling yeah. that air. And you're right. It is the same basic thing because you're changing those compression waves, those sound waves with the air. So a whistle is going to do something very, very similarly. You're going to control those air compression waves, those sound waves, just through your mouth instead. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but what's tricky is you're doing something different with a whistle than when you're regularly breathing in and out. And you kind of already did this, right? So like if you just take your, your mouth and you breathe in and out, like that's not a whistling sound. Yeah. Right? And you talked about one thing might be the shape of your lips. And you're correct. You do have to make that opening smaller and roundish. Okay. Right? Kind of like mm -hmm. puckering. Yeah. Right? And so that's part of it, but you can do that and still not have a whistle sound. <sighs> oh, you're right. Right? Yeah. Right? And so the last piece that actually makes the whistling, and I'll bet you probably haven't consciously thought about this before because I haven't either. It's your tongue. Oh, In your mouth, that makes when your sense. tongue is flat, like no, like it would just normally be sitting there, you don't whistle. 
But in order to whistle, your tongue changes shape inside your mouth and actually goes up a little bit. Yeah. Try it. I'm trying to move my tongue while I right? do it. Well, so <laughs> so do let's do it the other way around. And I know this is odd, but it's actually pretty interesting. So if you try just changing the pitch of your whistle from low to high or high to low, it doesn't matter, but just pay attention as you're changing the pitch to what your tongue is doing. Okay. Oh, it moves. It moves. Yes, oh, it does. Wow. Right? So how does it move? Like up and down. Yeah. Like up and down, like in, like towards the roof of your mouth, towards the bottom of your mouth. Oh, no, hold on. Let me do it again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Towards, towards the opening and towards the roof of my mouth and then away you- from that and down. So up and down a little bit, but also forward and backward, like yeah, towards yeah, your like teeth and away from your teeth. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to, I know this is, it's kind of weird, but I'm going to do it too, right? It wasn't a great whistle, but it's fine. Uh, but like, yes, there's a little bit of up and down, but also the forward and back. So you're yeah. actually changing the shape in your oh. mouth, which is the same way that musical instruments work. Yeah. Now they work in a lot of different ways, but mm-hmm. you know, for woodwinds like a flute or a clarinet, you've got a hole or like a saxophone, right? You're, you've got buttons that you push that control where the sound exits. What you're actually doing is changing the length that the, that the air is moving through. Mm. Well, so this- I played the trombone. So that is probably yes. the easiest example is... When the slide goes way out, it is a longer length that the air has to go through than when it comes in. Right. And when it's farther out and it's a longer length, what happens to the pitch? It goes down. It goes down. Yeah. Right. And so brass instruments, uh, and the trombone's a great example, is the same thing. Trumpets are doing the same thing. When you're pushing those buttons on a trumpet, it's actually redirecting the air in a longer or shorter path. Yeah. So... And it actually, you'll notice it actually matches. So you talked about the trombone, right? And so when you slide the, it's called a slide, is that right? Yeah. (laughs) That was convincing. When you slide (laughs) it down farther and the note gets lower, you're giving a longer, a bigger, longer spot, like amount of space for the, the sound to move through. Yeah. The same thing is happening when you're whistling. If you have a lower pitch, your tongue is farther away from your teeth. The space is larger. So why? Why is it higher pitched when there's less space? So it has to do with this concept called resonance. Okay. And I'm going to do a very basic explanation of resonance. And if you want to talk more about resonance, we can, again, do that at a deep, at another time too in a deeper dive. But resonance has to do with the way those sound waves interact with each other. And because they are waves, you can actually get waves to be in sync with each other or out of sync with each other. A really good, a really good like analogy is being on a swing at a park. Okay. I'm assuming you've been on a swing at a park. Oh, I certainly have, yes. Okay. Yes. And you can get yourself to swing more, correct? Yeah, by pumping my legs. Pumping your legs, exactly. Mm -hmm. But you have to pump your legs in a certain pattern at a certain time. Yeah. Otherwise, it messes it up, Okay. Mm -hmm. So you need your legs to go out in front of you as you are moving forward. Yeah. And you need your legs to come back underneath you as you're moving backwards. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So those motions have to be in sync with your body's motion on the swing already. Okay. If Have you ever tried to do it the other way? Yeah, I've definitely watched my stepson do it the other way because he's convinced that that's how he should pump. And mm. he fails a lot and is very frustrated 
but he just feels <laughs> like that that's how he's supposed to do it. Right. But it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so when you are pumping with your existing motion, you are in resonance with it. That is motion mm. in resonance because okay. your additional motion matches the pre existing motion. Got it. And there's a very specific frequency. So, how often you would move your legs up and down, mm -hmm. right? It, it's fancy word is an oscillation. You oscillate back and forth, right? But the, there's a specific frequency that you need to move your legs. And if you aren't at that frequency, it doesn't add up and build to your height. You don't go higher and higher. The same thing is happening with sound waves. For a given size of a container, like your mouth, right? There is a specific frequency of sound that can be amplified because it matches or it resonates. It's in sync with the actual size of the container. Oh. And so when you are able to get the your the air moving through your mouth at the right rate, the vibrations match and resonate and make the sound louder and louder and louder so that you can hear it. Mm. But what about higher pitch? So what you're doing is you're changing that size, right? You're making, you're making the space, whoops, you're making the space for the sound to resonate in smaller, mm -hmm. which means that resonant frequency is going to be higher. It has to be a higher frequency in order for it to resonate. Oh, so like and if I were on a massive swing, my pumping would be slower. Yes. Because it would take longer to go and I'd have to put my legs yes. straight for a long time and tuck them back for a long time. But if I were on like an itty bitty swing, I'd be pumping really fast. Yeah. Okay. Great. Got Great it. connection. Yeah. And you can even notice that, that you're actually doing something different by putting your hand up in front of your mouth when you're whistling, but going from a low pitch to a high pitch and feel the amount of air coming out of your mouth and how it changes from a low pitch to a high pitch. Okay. I really hope everyone's doing this along with us because <laughs> they that would be, be fun for them. They should be. Unless like they're driving and maybe pull over first they, or You something. know what? Here's the thing. They could use one hand on the wheel one hand to cover their mouth so they can whistle. It won't look odd at all. It'll be yeah, totally fine. And not distracting at all. Yeah, officer, I was learning learning science. It's okay. <laughs> so, okay. I'm not whistling very well right now. Is it because I've been put on the spot? Probably. <laughs> my whistling is failing me right now. This is what the girl in kindergarten said is that if I breathe in and do it. Oh, here's. Oh yeah. It is a different pressure of air. It is. So probably after we're done recording, you'll feel fine again yes, and it'll work yes. just fine, uh -huh. but you actually have more air for a higher pitch sound than for a lower pitch sound. Mm. You're blowing harder than with the low pitch sound. You know, I had a voice teacher for a little bit and she worked with me on my singing. Mm -hmm. And she told me that when I, um, cause I'm an alto and she said, mm -hmm. when I'm really trying to hit those high notes, I just need more air. Mm. She was like, you don't need to sing it louder. You just need to like get more air going through your mouth to yeah. get that note more solid. Yeah, that makes that sense. That feels similar. Yeah. Interesting. So because you're changing the speed of the air, you're changing how the vibrations work, so you're changing the frequency of the sound. So you, as you change the frequency of the sound, you get a higher pitch. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I mean, that's the basics of whistling. Now, I did quite a bit of research for this, and there's not a lot of research that's actually been done about human whistling. And there's a lot that we still don't understand of exactly what's happening. And there's some debate about exactly what things vibrating and whatever. So if you want to dive in more deeply, go for it. And again, this is probably an oversimplification, 
but that's the basics of how it works. Ryan. Yes. Cheryl. We finally found your true field of study. This is what you can do your PhD on. This is what you can write your book on. This is your Ted talk. I mean, we found it. There's a we gap. We found it. Yes. yes. End of There's podcast. a gap in the research. We did it. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> uh, yep. There, I'll, I'll get started on that dissertation right now. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cheryl. Time for a quiz. Okay, fine. <laughs> See, you're, you're getting better at it. You're getting better. Oh, boy. <laughs> First question. What is sound? The little, the, it's squigglies. Can it's you air. be a little more descriptive? It's, um, it's, um, things changing the side. What are the molecules changing their size of space that they're in? I'll give it to you. I wasn't sure if you froze or if you froze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, the, the space between the molecules, yeah, oh, that gets okay, like compressed okay. or like so they get closer together or farther apart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, second question What parts of the mouth are needed for whistling? The lips and the tongue. Great. Why does moving your tongue change the pitch of a whistle? Because it changes the size of the hole that the air is going through. And when it is smaller, the air makes a higher noise. And when it is larger, it makes a lower pitch. Great. What is resonance? I knew you were going to ask me... And I get the thing with the swing. It's like everything lining up. Okay. And so. Um, is it specific to sound? Is resonance specific It doesn't to have to sound? be. Okay. But, in this case. That's, in this context, that's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. We're talking about sound and we're talking about how um, the air waves line up. And what happens when they line up? It makes a noise. Mm -hmm. And based on the size, it would be higher or lower. (laughs) This is what I used to do on quizzes sometimes. If I'm like, if I elaborate more on the other question, will it seem (laughs) like I got this one? Because I'm like, look at me tying this all together, guys. Um, But yes. That was a hard one, the resonance one. Yeah. It's hard to well, define. It is, and it's it's tricky. But you understand the analogy with the swing. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And so when the added motion, in this case, is in sync with the existing motion, it amplifies it. It makes it bigger. Like, right? Amplifies. You swing more. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like, partial credit. You're okay. part, part way okay. there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Last question. How are whistling and musical instruments similar to each other? They're very similar to each other. And really it's that the air is the thing making the noise. And so with whistling, that has to do with it coming out of your mouth and like the size of that and everything and the shape Mm-hmm. And with musical instruments, that has to do with coming out of like the end of the horn or like the holes be- between the little like keypads. It's it's a variety of things, but it's um, the shape and length, the shape of the holes and the length of distance that the air is traveling through that makes a sound. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. See, now you're an expert on whistling. Now I'm an expert. Yep. They're going to hire me. It's going to be my PhD actually, Ryan. So it will be, we'll be competing for it for sure. (laughs) Yes. And I have one final thing to mention, Cheryl. Okay. In my research, 
uh, most of the articles that I found initially were how to whistle, which was not quite what I was looking for. But one of the things it says is that when you're trying to learn, oftentimes people find it easier to whistle when breathing in <laughs> than when breathing out. And so that is a completely valid way of starting your whistling journey. Oh my goodness. I wish I could travel back to kindergarten and produce that article to show that girl and been like, you know what? I am just at the beginning of my whistling journey. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, we're almost out of time. So why don't you go ahead and pack up your stuff and get ready for my closing remarks. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I slept through science or on Twitter at slept science. If you have dumb science questions like I do, please send them to us. You can email us at isleptthroughscience at gmail.com, or you can even send us a voice memo and we'll play it on the podcast. Please rate and review our podcast to tell other people what you think about it. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode and share about our podcast on social media. Thank you to Beth Reed Miller for the artwork. You can check out more of Beth's artwork at Beth is something. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Ah, the bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you.